Okay, I'm going to get started. I have 10 minutes to talk about this. But thank you for all of you guys uh, waiting so long for this talk. I apologize. I was mem mesmerized by the uh, Power PC IBM talk downstairs. <laughs> um, so my name is Linda Wang. I'm one of the kernel managers at um, the kernel team in RHEL in the Red Hat. Um, we're gonna, today I'm going to talk quickly about the kernel live patching. Um, kernel live patching, what is it? We're going to cover what it is, what does it, how does it work, and some of the tooling needed, and some of the delivery mechanism. So kernel hot patching, or live patching, technical review. Um, so what is kernel live patching? Um, so think of kernel live patching is trying to fix your running engine in a car that's running. Imagine you're driving along the highway and you are basically have parts that in the engine needs to be replaced. So that's exactly what kernel live patching is doing. So um, how does it work? Um, simply put is we take some of the patches, um, kernel patches, we turn them into basically go through some sort of analysis to see the feasibility of turning a patch into a kernel module and to see if it fits into the patching method and or convert the patch into something we call or into the uh, kernel modules that are basically uh, applicable to the infrastructure that we have. Um, there are, notice that I drew, drew two of them. So basically the ones that are applicable to the light patching infrastructure is the ones that basically looks like the beautiful polished diamond. And that's the ones we want, right? Actually, yeah, octangular diamond. Yes, uh, girl, diamond's the girl's best friend, right? Um, but if you have a patch that is not applicable, then you want to basically, um, did you actually turn out to be something that's not polished? And take a look what happens when it's not polished. The car's not very happy when you're running, right? And more than likely, the, kernel, the, uh, the, the car is actually gonna basically stall and stop. So what we wanted to do is make sure that we actually apply something that is actually applicable and works. Which is the next slide. Oh, actually it's a smile. <laughs> Let me see if I can fix that during runtime. Oh, I, I actually know it's, it's actually um, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in the projection mode, so I can't really change it now. Um, but anyway, it's a smile. I'm trying to paste it over to the, 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 the unhappy smile. Um, so if you apply the, the actual polished kernel module into the running system and running car, um, it actually works, right? And it, the car continues to work. In this case, the car is, if you haven't noticed the analogy, the car is actually the uh, running kernel. Uh, the actually, the car is the operating system. The engine itself is the running kernel. So how does it really work? Um, we use uh, existing the kernel infrastructure, which is F-Trace, and also, um, actually, RPM should be down there. The existing tools are KZIK dump. So basically, we use the existing infrastructure like um, F-Trace, and also the existing um, uh, install infrastructure, which is using RPM. Um, we also have is used, basically, it should work with existing tools like KZIK dump, crash, and trace points. But there are obviously some limitations to it. So uh, we can go into more details later on. Um, so under, currently, it's, the project is under development and productization. Um, the folks who are working on this is going to be attending the um, Linux Collaboration Summit, which is coming up in a couple months. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the limitations. Uh, there are a little bit about, um, so in order for a, for a kernel module to load into a running kernel, you have to kind of know um, how the kernel itself gets patched. Um, so there are things like local uh, variable. If you know F-Trace infrastructure, you know that you know you can only load in the um, global related structures. And so in the same thing, it only, um, so anything that's local variables, local functions, any inline functions are actually not something applicable to change. Um, those are some of the limitations. Um, I'm gonna leave it to this. I'm gonna see if anybody has any questions. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. 
40k spice. So is, if k spice, I think uh, if it's um, if similar to uh, patching a running kernel, then it is. I don't know if similar. I don't know the similarity because I know k. I don't. I presumably k spice is a non-open source project, right? Is it? It used to be, right? So yeah, I can't do the comparison for the case. Yeah. So, um, but it is if it's a patching mechanism, maybe similar. Any other questions? <laughs> Can this be used? <laughs> Tracking of user conversations. Hmm. Yeah, well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's plain text, then I, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's what else? Um, so there's, so what, can I, what else can I tell you? So um, how many people can tell me based on what I just talked about, how many components of this particular feature requires? Anybody can tell me based on what I just said? Let me go back. Actually, yeah, this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Meat grinder is the first, its first tool. Then you have a component, which is the diamond or the, uh, the blob. And then the last part is the, um, the, the basically the part that the tool actually installs into the system. So there will be three components to this feature. Yes, I, I, I think if people notice um, there's a, a blog about it, right? I think um, K, I think that they are using similar upstream um, kernel in, in, in kernel infrastructure called kftrace. I don't know how similarly they are using other parts of the components. For example, the um, how they do the meat grinder. And I don't know how they implement the... Uh, insertion, right? So 